Chapter 11, When It Hits the Fan. On Monday morning, Tommy felt like he was ready for the coming week. His team had worked all weekend to produce the best possible results under extreme circumstances. He had a great morning with Brian, and they had reviewed the new board together before leaving the house. Setting off their week was a feeling of being organized. Brian had made his own selection on the whiteboard for a project he and Maisie had cooked up. It read, Announce your intentions to teach Hank to wait by the bus stop with me. Be consistent with your actions. Every morning, give Hank treats for walking down to the bus stop. Reward positive behavior. If Hank is at the bus stop in the afternoon, he gets extra treats and three cubes of the new super treat from the feed store. Reflection. What worked? What did not work? But not like this. <clears throat> As Tommy started to climb into the driver's seat of his truck, Brian asked, Dad, can I walk down to the bus alone? Tommy asks, Are you planning another skip day, are you? Brian smirked and said, Nope, I just need to visit with Hank on the way. Tommy made a motion like he was going to mess up Brian's hair and then gave him a big hug. After climbing into his truck, he made his way off down to the main road, avoiding those pesky tree branches he he noted to cut back as they seemed desperate to drag across the top of his truck. For the first time in a while, Tommy felt like things were beginning to refocus. They were not out of the woods yet, but the magic Vanessa had helped him understand was beginning to show results. Brian was doing well in school. Their home life was more than pleasant. It was downright enjoyable. Arriving at the office, (coughs) Tommy assembled his team and began by thanking everyone for working wild hours and maintaining a positive and supportive attitude. Ashley from HR attended. And she also thanked the teams for their efforts and their dedication. Next, it had been next. It was Ben's turn to speak. He discussed the areas where work was needed to complete, be completed by other departments. There were a few outlier departments who fell under different vice presidents who had been a bit difficult to work with. So Ben explained that the information would be streamlined and shared with Bart and those who needed to take action with the areas of the, with other areas of the company. Overall, the mood was calm, and Tommy's team was working as a unit again. As the meeting was winding down, Mr. Mavy arrived. His demeanor was stiff and seemed to be in a big hurry. His hands clenched and were fidgety. He started by blaming the team for all the long hours that other departments had been had to work, starting stating the incompetent the incomplete areas of this project were a direct result of the failing delivery division. Tommy felt the room return to an overpressured explosion pending state it had been before the department had pulled together as a team over the past week. His heart pounded as he watched the reactions in the room. Mr. Mavy threatened everyone with their jobs if the coming weeks didn't go flawlessly and everyone did not continue giving the same extended effort and hours until the project completion. If anyone had issues with the hours or what was expected, he could have new people starting at their desks within a few days. He assured everyone. And then, as if the bell had signaled the end of class, he marched out of the conference room and down the hall, leaving Tommy to take the volleys and attacks from glares that were left in his wake. Tommy's high hopes for pulling the team together evaporated. And now, he just hoped to make it out of the room alive. By lunchtime, he received messages from Bart to attend a mandatory meeting with HR at 5 p.m. back in his office. Tommy looked again at the many mementos and happy moments in his and his team's lives over the years. He glanced around the room. He noticed a photo of him and Bart with the many, with, with one of the many, from one of the many company outings. They were standing together and smiling as if they had just won the lottery. Is it possible that his longtime friend and mentor had been swayed by Mr. Mavy to let him go? The thought creeped a feeling deeper than sadness in him. Something more akin to real dejection. He could not feel, he could feel a little tingling in his belly 
and a slight wave of nausea threatened. Tommy felt like he was really going to be fired. The astonishment was more than he could bear. Yet again, his veins seemed to be filled with molasses. A few minutes later, a meandering flow of employees dropped by to deliver their notices of separation. Some quit on the spot, and others gave notice. This was not unexpected, but Tommy was shell-shocked nonetheless. Never in all of his career had something like this happened. Tommy and the delivery team were spiraling out of control and falling fast. This meltdown was a new low for Sanitas S and his professional career. Most importantly, importantly, he was felling as a friend to those he had worked with and those that he's cared about for many years. Tommy shut his office door and thought of cleaning out his desk. Then he thought of Vanessa's recipe. Announce your intentions. Let others know your goals and what to expect. Be consistent with your actions. Show you are sound in your conviction and demonstrating to others you have a direction and encourage them to come along. Review, reward positive behavior. Acknowledge and reward when you see positive behavior. Reflection, review what worked and what to improve in the future. The water cooler talk in the company mess messaging application was describing an exodus going on after most of the department meetings went horribly amiss throughout the day. Tommy thought back on his morning and could only imagine that that same scene playing out over and over throughout Sanitas S meeting rooms. He knew the offshore team better be ready for a tsunami of unpleasantness. Tommy began asking himself, what do my intentions need to be to solve this? He knew he needed to break it down into bite-sized inter intervals and feed them to the group to get the momentum going in a single direction and, and eliminate the noise. A few minutes before 5 p.m., Tommy went to meet with HR and the grievance officer. He stopped by Bart's office on the way and asked him to dinner. Bart looked as if he had had a long, difficult day as well. Hey, old man, you good? Tommy inquired with a half-hearted poke. I know it's short notice, but it's a bit of an emergency for the company, I'm afraid. Tommy, are you asking me to dinner to quit? Bart asked gently. No, are you sending me to HR to have me fired? No, I need your help to figure out this mess. Then come by for dinner at my place tonight so we can work on our plan, Tommy offered. Okay, I'll be there at about 7 if you make steaks. See you tonight. Tommy left Bart's office relieved that he was not going to be his last walk to that side of the building, at least not today. He kept going over Vanessa's four steps and how he might be able to use them. With a newfound confidence, he decided to go on the offense. He would provide direction for people that could relate to and believe in. <laughs> 